This video is sponsored by Noob. If you're a noob, try researching before you do stuff. I just said, yes, Alright kids, today I am going to show you what I learned about making these plumbing parts because I like plumbing. These could be assembled and connected to a boiler for making distilled water, essential oils. If you really wanted to, you could probably distill alcohol with them, but that's none of my business. Thanks to my generous patrons, I was able to get this last piece so that I can finish this build and get to some deeper projects for my channel. So thanks a lot, guys. My goal here was to make parts that are simple to build, but also modular, meaning they can be assembled or taken apart really easily for cleaning or swapped out for different parts for different functions. So I will definitely admit that I am not very good at soldering. I'm sorry for that. This is not a professional video. This is a hobbyist video, but I have learned a lot through internet research and uh, emails with a buddy of mine. Thank you, D. And failing a bunch, a whole lot. Surprisingly, there aren't many videos for attaching stainless steel ferrules to copper pipe. Jesse has one on his channel. I'll go ahead and put the link for that right up here. It's, it's where I learned a lot of this stuff. Angry Parrot has a couple, but the good news is that I recorded all of my fumblings and failings so that you can learn from my mistakes and hopefully avoid them. Honestly, the best teacher is doing it. I can tell you what not to do and I can make sure that you know the right materials, but you're probably gonna have to fail a few times. The good news is if you do fail, and your ferrule leaks, you can undo it and then clean up the area, clean up the ferrule and redo it. I know because I did it three times. The most important thing to remember is that it doesn't matter if your joints look like garbage because you can clean them up. As long as they seal and they don't let out liquid or vapor, then you're fine. Just clean them up and I'll, I'll get into that later in the video. My design may seem a little wonky because I'm cannibalizing some stuff from an older build. Got some one inch copper, half inch copper, compression fittings, and that's just because that's what I had on hand. But the main thing is it's got the, uh, the two inch barrels on it to allow it to hook on to a two inch copper pipe, which could then hook on to a boiler, theoretically. But your design is gonna look like whatever you want. The main thing I wanted to get across was how to work with these things. So let's get going. So I ordered all my parts from Amazon, including my two inch ferrules and tri-clamps, all the copper parts, the pipe. I also got some PTFE gaskets for the tri-clamps because PTFE doesn't break down under heat the way silicone can, especially when it comes in contact with harsh chemicals. So the first thing I had to do was actually make a shim to fit around one of the ferrules so that it would fit snugly inside of the one inch to two inch reducer. Without that shim, it just rattles around. But with the shim, it fits nice and tight. But you wanna make sure that you sand all the surfaces that are gonna be soldered, inside and outside of the shim, inside the reducer, and the outside lip of the ferrule. And that's just 80 grit sandpaper. Now the biggest mistake I made was using paste flux. You wanna get some liquid flux. I just took some silver solder and wrapped that around the ferrule so it fits, and then snip it off to make a little ring. And there I go, using the wrong flux inside. So again, do not use paste flux for stainless steel connections. So you put that solder ring up inside the reducer, press it down over the shim and the ferrule. You can see that solder ring on the inside there sitting exactly where I want it. Sadly, it didn't work out the way I planned. You can see that despite my efforts, it totally did not work. So I tried again and that mostly worked, but I did end up having to do it again. Here I'm doing the connection between the one inch pipe and the reducer, and that's a copper to copper connection. So you can use paste flux here, but I still highly recommend using the liquid flux. You wanna make sure that you heat that reducer a little bit more than you heat the pipe because it's got thicker copper. And here I'm just working on the half inch copper pipe. A lot of these are recycled. I desoldered them and had to clean them out with sandpaper to get the old solder out so the new connections would fit together. And you can see here I'm finally using the liquid flux. 
And for copper to copper, especially on half inch, it really doesn't take a whole lot of heat. And it's a good idea to heat the pipe kind of away from the joint and allow the heat to travel up into that fitting. And then just touch your solder on there a little bit to see if it's gonna melt. If not, give it some more heat. And once your solder starts to flow, it really doesn't take much but I am not very good at this, so I tend to add a little too much solder to all of my connections. Using a map gas torch is a much better idea here than using propane. It gets hotter and you really need that heat, especially when you start working with the stainless steel. So this is what happens when you use paste flux. You get all kinds of carbon on there because you have to heat it for too long in order to get that stainless steel hot enough. So always use liquid flux. And here I'm just desoldering one of these ferrules and you just give it enough heat and wiggle it around with some pliers until it slips free. Then you have the fun task of cleaning all that carbon off of your ferrules. And it's just a little 80 grit sandpaper. You can use a little water to rinse it off every once in a while, but just keep sanding until you get down to the bare metal. Sandpaper works great for getting all the carbon off, but when it comes to getting all that old solder off, sandpaper just isn't gonna cut it. If you have a Dremel tool with wire brushes, that'll probably do great. I don't have that, so I just used an old file I found in the bottom of my toolbox. Not ideal, because it will scratch the copper, but not so bad that it becomes a problem. File all that solder off so that you have a nice smooth surface to work with. Once you get your pieces clean and you're ready to re-solder the ferrules, Squeeze that up inside the pipe, make sure you flux it really well, and put flux on your ferrule as well, and then press it together to get a nice fit. Now after all that work and cleaning, I did something really stupid. Let's see if you can guess what it is. A smart person would see this coming right away. Oh geez, who could have guessed that that would happen? So while that piece is cooling off, I started working on the two inch pipe again. I've got my solder ring on the inside there and the flux has been put on. This is press fitted in here. Uh, it's fairly snug, but it may still come out as I heat it. And I don't want it to drop off like the last one. So I've got a copper wire and an old piece of scrap copper wrapped around like this. And I'm just gonna yank it up bend it over like that to hold it in place. This is not gonna drop down at all as it heats up. So when you're soldering these stainless steel ferrules, it's a good idea to heat the pipe first and let the heat travel down. And once the solder starts to flow, then you move the heat down to the steel to help it wick that solder back up into the joint. There's way too much solder on this because I had a bad habit of going overboard with the solder because I was afraid it was gonna leak again. And the only problem with doing too much solder is that you have a lot of cleanup to do. So I was actually using a rasp here. Surprisingly, not a super fun process. But once you get that done, you can smooth everything out with sandpaper and perform a leak test before you move on to the next stage. You need to test all of your stainless steel connections since they're the trickiest to get right. To do this, you just take an extra ferrule, some saran wrap, and a ferrule gasket. Set your newly made connection on top and lock it down with a tri-clamp. Add enough water to cover the entire ferrule connection. Then wait about 15 minutes and check for leaks all the way around. If you find any, you need to do some touch-up soldering and cleanup before you move on to the last step. And then it's time to polish. And the polishing is just steel wool. I used super fine steel wool, just scrub that copper until it shines. Here's a little before and after shot. And then I did the same process for the last piece. A little bit of sanding and then scrub it down real good with the super fine steel wool. And here's another little before and after shot for you. And that's it. Okay, so you saw how nasty those got from the oxidation from the heat and the flux. So you can shine all this stuff up and now it looks a hell of a lot better than it did. As pretty as they are on the outside, they still look like garbage on the inside. Look at all that stuff. So you got to clean the guts. You got to clean the insides of these things. Otherwise, bad things happen. Some of you may know about uh, doing a citric acid bath for 
deoxidizing uh, your copper, getting it nice and shiny and clean looking. That's really good for maintenance, but it's not really good for an initial cleaning. So for the initial cleaning to get all this junk out of here, the smartest thing you can do is do a vinegar run and a sacrificial alcohol run. Both of those things. I know it's time consuming, but it's the smart thing to do. A lot of guys end up skipping these steps. They end up getting blue product coming out the other end because of all the copper sulfates on the inside of their still. Don't do that. Clean it. It's like changing the oil in your car. You gotta do basic maintenance. A vinegar run is basically where you pour a gallon of, of vinegar down into your boiler and then however much water you need to cover up your elements. Turn it on high and let that vinegar steam blast all the way through your system. Do not turn on your condenser water. Let it run for a half an hour with no cooling. You want it to, to scour the entire system and get all that steam around every surface. And then take it apart rinse it out with water because if the acid sits in there from the vinegar it can start to to react with the copper too so clean it and then rinse it and then we're going to do the last thing which is the sacrificial alcohol run we call it a sacrificial alcohol cleaning run because it is never supposed to be something that you drink that's like drinking mop water just because clean water went into the mop bucket doesn't mean that after you're done mopping the floor you can drink that water don't do that Alcohol is an incredibly powerful solvent, especially when it's hot. So anything that's left in there is going to get blasted out. The good news, you can use that for sanitizer, but don't ever put it inside of a product that's going to go inside of a human. You could ferment a sugar wash, and you can use a, a couple of boxes of cheap ass wine, you can use some old faints. Once you get steam coming out, let it go for at least 15 minutes, and then you can turn on your condenser if you want to collect the output for sanitizer or fuel or whatever. Don't drink it. One of the things that people tend to forget when they're doing a cleaning run is that there's raw alcohol just blasting out of the end of that pipe. It's not being knocked down by your condenser, so it's all vapor. That is when the danger level for distilling is at its highest. If you do work on just flame, go ahead and turn on your condenser. It's just, it's too dangerous not to. Super well ventilated area outside would be the best. Keep a fire extinguisher nearby because you never know. Just better safe than sorry. And after that, you just rinse everything out and let them all air dry. That should get all the junk stripped out of this stuff nicely. Whether you build your parts or you buy them brand new, it is always a good idea to do a vinegar run and a sacrificial alcohol run. Take the time and do the proper cleaning. I know I'm a safety sally, but this hobby gets a bad enough rap as it is. We don't need folks poisoning themselves just because they got too excited. Patience. All right, so that's all I've got for now. I am going to uh, add some other parts. That's one of the things that's so awesome about the modular design. Once you get your tri-clamp ferrules in here, these things are basically copper Legos. They're fun. Thank you to all of my Patreon members for your encouragement and support on this project. I definitely could not have done this without you guys. Thanks so much. So if you like this video, if you learned anything, if now you're excited to work with copper and stainless steel, sorry. Woo! That's for later. Do me a favor and hit the like button because it really helps out the channel, tells YouTube that you value this kind of content. For all the viewers out there who actually know how to do this properly, please put your best advice down in the comments section. For anybody that comes across this video who doesn't know how to do this, check the comments and hopefully we'll have a good collection of advice. So do us all a favor and help out the noobs, me included. So in just a few days, it's going to be Halloween and I have another video planned for that. So if you are not subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button down below and the little bell icon right next to it so you get notified when I post that video. Thanks for watching. Talk at you later. No, of course I never played the didgeridoo ever.